This is the Erdington Health and Wellbeing Walk-In Centre. It's smack bang in the middle of Erdington High Street in Birmingham. Now, considering it's the first centre of its kind in this area, within the first eight weeks of opening, over 1,600 patients have been seen. Now, people can come in and see a doctor or a nurse 365 days a year, and the centre's open between 8am and 8pm. Now, today, Health Minister Anne Milton has come to do a consultation on the white paper and also see for herself how the centre works. We've tried to do it in the past, so say whatever you do, it doesn't make any sense, but it well, should do. Hello, nice to meet you, Anne Milton. After spending time with the staff, I caught up with the minister to find out what she thought about her visit to the centre. So you've come to Erdington Health and Wellbeing Centre today, had a good look round, spoken to some of the staff here. What do you think of the work that's being done here? Absolutely fantastic and I think that the one thing that's really striking is the amazing enthusiasm that I've seen from the staff. This is this is staff who feel as if um, the strings of bureaucracy, I think, have been cut. And, and, you know, this is just innovative, exciting. And as I say, that, that amazing enthusiasm for staff is something that we really need to capture. Now, what do you think are probably the main priorities for healthcare here in the West Midlands? Oh, gosh, I, I always hesitate to give a list because there's so many and so diverse. I think actually the West Midlands, like everywhere in the country, is facing problems with um, how we look after people with long-term conditions, um, how we manage that, and actually how we keep them as well as we possibly can. And I think the nice thing about this service that I've visited today is it's right in the high street. And you don't often see the NHS in the high street. And you're here in Birmingham today, we're talking about the white paper, you're having a consultation here today with some local people. So what's the aim of the consultation? The aim of the consultation is what it says on the tin, we want to hear what other people think. Um, we have put forward our ideas, we've put forward a framework, but there's quite a lot of detail to fill in. And what we want to do is to hear from people um, all around the country as to what they feel about the changes, how they think they would work in their area, and also raise awareness of the fact that this is an opportunity for them to do some of the things they've often wanted to do, and that is actually at the front line, making decisions themselves about the care and the services their local patients and local people get. The restructure of the NHS is set to be somewhere between two and three billion pounds, I think. But a lot of people will be asking, is this the right time to do this when all the headlines are saying cuts across the board? But actually, this is just the time to do it. This is a time where we've got to make, finally make, the NHS efficient and effective and bring back the decisions about local people's health care to the local clinician. What matters to patients, actually, isn't all the stuff that's in the white paper. What matters to people is the service they get. They only care about what's on the front line, rightly so. What matters is that they get the care they want when they need it, uh, somewhere they can get to. And then how then, with the changes that will be coming up, um, how will you then know um, how effective they've been? Outcomes. What matters is, did anybody get better? And we can tend to lose sight of that. We measure lots of processes. What matters is the outcome. Who got better? Did they get better as quickly as they should have done? Um, what can we do to make people get better quicker? Uh, what changes can we make in the way we deliver healthcare services to make sure that we get the very best outcomes in the world?